Ministry of Labor to make this issue as a government policy. Indeed, the Ministry of Health and the Ministry of Labor are currently engaged in discussions with the other governments, notably the Saudi government in Saudi Arabia and other governments in that region. As you know, we also have a substantial number of nurses and doctors in the UK, and we want to engage these governments so that we do so formally, so that uh, our, our workers, may they be health workers or other workers, can go and work in a formalized format. That way, we will avoid the abuse that we hear exists in some countries where we hear that our people are being mistreated. But if we do so in the manner that we did with the Seychelles government, then our people will be treated with dignity. And we want them to be, to be, to be treated as such. Just like we treat other people in our country, we expect that our people are also going to be treated fairly with dignity. They must not be paid as third-rate workers. They must be paid as the uh, nationals of those countries are, or better than the nationals of those nations are. Because we believe we have trained them well, and we believe that Kenyans uh, have come of age in terms of their international work. We have many doctors who are working overseas. We have many nurses working overseas. But it's only that we want to formalize the way that they work, the terms that they go on, so that even as people are leaving this country, they know where they are going. We want to have uh, to adopt um, preparation protocols so that before people leave Kenya, they are trained to observe the cultures of the places that they are going. They understand the nations that they are visiting. They understand the, the social fabrics of the countries that they are going to be working in. And that preparation uh, is necessary for us to retain the dignity that we want uh, our people to be treated with. And so, fellow Kenyans, uh, just to turn today to the issue of, uh, of the disease and to say that today we have 123 people uh, who have tested uh, positive uh, to the disease out of a sample size of nearly 5,000, that is 4,948 tested in the last 24 hours. It now means that uh, so far we have recorded uh, 98,000 555 cases since the pandemic stuck in March last year. This pushes also our cumulative test so far to over a million, up to 1 million, 102, 595. And from the cases today, 111 are Kenyans, while 12 are foreigners. The disease continues as from the day it started to uh, be more prevalent in men than in women. Uh, and today, 74 of those people are male and have been convert positive, while 49, 49 persons uh, are female. And in terms of age, there is a one-year-old, while the oldest is uh, 85. Under normal circumstances then, when you look at the positivity rate that the country is experiencing over the last um, um, a couple of weeks, you can see that our positivity rate has been very encouraging. However, given the fact that we have just come out of uh, uh, the holiday season, given the fact that uh, our children have just gone back to school, we want to maintain a very high level of vigilance and maintain the, the, the measures that, uh, uh, that are in place so that we can uh, observe if there is any surges as a result of, um, of the cases, of the, of the holidays. Today also, we have uh, a student who also uh, tested positive, but we believe that that is a case that came from home because uh, the father of the child is also in isolation. What I would like to urge from the parents is that if you are tested positive, and if, you, in, if any of the parents or any of the siblings in, is in isolation, then it is very important that you keep your children under observation at home until tests are done on those children. I repeat that 
If you have got a positive case, then you should keep your children at home so that the health workers can come and carry out tests to ensure that you do not send your children at home uh, to school when they have got um, uh, positive, when they, have, when they may be uh, positive. That would help ensure that we do not start a spread in the, in the schools. And as soon as we identify any cases, any positive cases, we'll essentially isolate them until uh, they test uh, negative. Uh, 412 patients today uh, have recovered from the disease. Uh, a lot of them, 378 from the home-based isolation care, while 34 are from various uh, facilities. So we are happy that, <clears throat> that some 81,667 persons uh, have so far recovered uh, totally. So, ladies and gentlemen, I want to stop there and take uh, one or two questions if, uh, if there are any. Uh, but today, I, I, I really came here so that I can thank the team that has come from the Seychelles uh, because they did us proud. The Seychelles government has been very, very, very uh, thankful to us as a country and, and to those uh, health workers uh, particularly. Kwa hivo, mini mina shukuru wale watu ambao, wale wafanyikazi, wa wizara ya afya, wale nurses ambao walienda Seychelles, uh, huko wamefanya kazi mzuri sana serikali ya Seychelles imepigia sisi simu wamepigia sisi simu na kutushukuru kwa vile tuliwatumia watu wa kuwasaidia na ni vile tu eh, rais wa jamhuri ya Kenya president Uhuru Kenyatta ndio alisema ni lazima tusaidie wengine hata wakati wengine pia wanatusaidia wakati Hao vijana na wasichana walienda Seychelles hospitali hii ilikuwa na madaktari kutoka, si, kutoka Cuba. Kwa hivyo ni kusema sisi tulikuwa tunasaidiwa na watu wa Cuba, madaktari wa Cuba, lakini vile vile sisi kama watu wa Kenya pia tunapenda kusaidia wengine ndio tukatuma watu hamsini kusaidia serikali ya Seychelles. Lakini ningetaka kusema ya kwamba E, hii sio mara ya kwanza hata wakati Ebola ilikuwa kule West Africa tuliwatuma e, well, healthcare workers wakasaidiana na wao pia na wakati hii virus coronavirus ilitokea hao ambao walikuwa huko e, upande wa West Africa walitusaidia pia hapo mwanzoni kwa hivyo mtu akisaidia mwingine as huenda wikawa ni yeye pia anajisaidia vile vile Tuna masungumzo na serikali nyingi dunia hii e, sana sana e, serikali za Saudi Arabia e, wata goto watu wa Emirates na wengineo ambao tuko na masungumzo na wizara ya labor pia dio tuone kwamba tuone kama tunaweza saidia wale ambao hawana kazi wale ambao wako trained wamesomeshwa hii mambo ya afya lakini pengine hatuna nafasi ya kuwapitia kazi hapa Kenya tuone ya kwamba hata hawa wanaweza kwenda nchi zingine na kufanya kazi huko na kusaidia familia zao zikiwa hapa nchi yetu ya, ya, ya Kenya vile vile na ningetaka pia kusema najua ni lazima niulizwe hali ya wale ambao wana mgomo wameendelea namna gani na vile sisi tunasema tunawasihi wale ambao pengine wanaendelea na mgomo vile tumejionea sisi wenyewe tukifanya survey yetu katika wizara ya afya ni watu wachache sana ambao kwa wakati huu wako katika hali ya mgomo kwa hivyo ni kuasi hata ingawa sio kitu sio ki, kila sio kitu uh, sio kila kitu iko sawa ni vizuri tukubuke wakati huu wa hii virusi tusaidiane tuendelee na kazi na tuendelee kusungumza na county governments na pia serikali yetu wakati tunaendelea mbele tutaendelea kusaidiana na hiyo hali lakini lazima pia tukubuke hii ni wakati mgumu sana huu ni wakati mgumu sana kwa sababu uchumi umezoroteka kwa sababu ya hii uh, virusi na sio Kenya tu peke yake ni dunia nzima 
ambayo inaumia ina, ina, ina kiuchumi asante sana My name is Saida Hassan from KCN News. My question is still on health workers. Uh, who is in charge because we see an overlap of uh, information between the Ministry of Health and uh, the Council of Governors, whereby we see the county saying a different thing from what the Council of Governors is saying, and this has brought about the whole entire issue of uh, a health workers being on strike. So there is this overlap of you know, information. Where is the problem and who is in charge? Uh, my name is Dorika Swangira from Citizen TV. I have two questions. One is on the status of the vaccines. We've been given timelines by the Ministry of Health. Where are we in terms of preparedness, storage, and also just the enlightening people? And then again on the numbers. You know, when Kenyans here, we have 86, we have 100. People are asking, have we flattened the curve? What do these numbers mean? And uh, lastly, uh, there are some health workers who claim that we're having these low numbers because we're not testing enough, and also as a result of the strike. So to what extent is that true? And um, in terms of also the containment measures, you've said that uh, we have not yet, uh, we're not at a point where we're relaxing them, but what does this inform? Schools are already open, businesses are reopening. Will we see a relaxation anytime soon? Okay, thank you, Dokas. Last one then. Jina langu ni Beatrice Gatonya Ngetich kutoka KBC. Uh, Jina langu ni Beatrice Gatonya kutoka KBC. Uh, waziri umesema kwamba wale walio kwenye mgomo ni wachache. Je, unamaanisha nini? Asante uh, sana. Thank you very much. Um, first is uh, the issue of uh, the healthcare workers and the possibility of confusion. I think there is no confusion at all. And let me explain. First and foremost, our constitution divides the role of health management in this country into two. A, that of the county governments in accordance with Schedule 4 of the constitution, where the Ministry of Health, as a national activity, takes over the role of uh, overall policy as far as management of health is concerned. And two, the county governments, who are essentially the employers of healthcare workers within the counties. Number three is that the national government also has its own health institutions. For instance, the institution we are in today is uh, a national government institution. Therefore, as far as uh, the health workers are concerned, there are health workers who work for the national government. There are health workers who work for the county governments. Therefore, the relationship between the employer and the employee will obviously differ because those workers who work for the county governments will deal in terms of their welfare, in terms of the insurance, in terms of the, the working environment, they will deal with the county governments. And this is why when we sign, when we sign the, the return to work agreements, we make it very clear that uh, what we are referring to in terms of our agreements are those workers who work for the county, for the country, and as for those situations that exist that are challenging in the county relationships, the Ministry of Health has agreed and signed to agree that uh, we will be arbitrators as a concerned ministry, as a, as a parent ministry, we will serve as arbitrators, we will engage both county governments and the health workers so that we can bring out a harmonious working relationship. But we have, no, we have no intention as a national government of usurping the role of the county governments as far as health management is concerned in accordance with the fourth schedule uh, of our constitution. 
So the council, the county, the, the, the council of governors has expressed certain reservations. We have listened to the council of governors. At the moment, they are engaged themselves directly with discussions with the, with, with the various unions. But as far as the national government working environment is concerned, we are quite clear, and that has been taken uh, care of. We continue from a policy and philosophy point of view to urge that the county governments engage and agree uh, on various uh, working uh, protocols with, uh, with, the, with the healthcare workers. But as I say and I repeat, we will not interfere. We are not, we cannot in law go and tell a county government whether to hire or to fire um, any of its workers, let alone the healthcare workers. On the issue of uh, vaccines, DOCAS, we have said that uh, we have engaged various institutions, of not notably Gavi, uh, who are the ones who are leading in the acquisition of uh, the vaccines that are expected in Kenya in the next, uh, next month in February, and we have given that as a date which we have been given. However, I have also said that it is quite possible for us to get these vaccines even earlier than that, particularly because don't forget that there are two players at it. There is a public sector, as in the government, but there is also the private sector that is also distributing vaccines in other parts of the world. And therefore, it is possible that, vac that vaccines may come here before the date that Gavi has given us in accordance with the arrangements that are being made by both the public and the private sector. We have also said that we are not using only one type of vaccine. And through the Africa platform, the Africa platform, which is working through CDC Africa, and indeed this afternoon, there is a meeting uh, to update the African uh, um, platform and for us to be told by CDC Africa, the level of engagement and a report is going to be given today. Um, the discussions that have been going on between the Africa platform, the suppliers all the way from Pfizer, Mondana, AstraZeneca, including also some of the Chinese ones such as uh, uh, Sinovac and Sinopharm, all these organizations are involved in the discussions to see when vaccines are coming to, uh, uh, to, 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 to this country. But I've also emphasized, and I continue to do so, that uh, there is no mandatory vaccination of anybody. We have given that the first people will be given opportunity uh, to take the vaccine will be the healthcare workers and other frontline soldiers, people who are engaged in very public uh, in very public um, uh, work, such as police, even our teachers are also on that same line. So as soon as we get the vaccine, that is where we are going to stop. As for flattening the curve, it is true, uh, Dorcas, you are right, that under normal circumstances, and given the, 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 pos the positivity rate that we have been experiencing over the last one or two weeks, we would be thinking about uh, declaration of a, a flattened curve. However, we cannot do so at the moment because we have not quite, we have not quite uh, taken uh, into consideration the impact or the effects of the holiday season as well as the uh, effects of opening the schools. So for now, we will maintain the containment measures that we have, the curfew and so on, we will continue to urge people to keep washing their hands, sanitizing, uh, keeping their distances, particularly, and we emphasize the use of masks so that uh, we can keep those figures where they are. I think you have also observed in other parts of the world where the, the figures have come down, positivity rate has dropped, and then a sudden surge has taken uh, uh, those countries back to square A. So the idea is that uh, we maintain the containment measures for us not to get back. And as for testing, I think if you notice the kind of figures that we have been reading, ideally, you know, in accordance with the uh, global standards, we should be testing something to the tune of 7,000 uh, persons per day. You notice, for example, like today, we are on about 5,000, uh, 5, and uh, we have been at that level, again, because of the availability of, uh, 
of, uh, vaccine, of uh, testing reagents. But um, when you look at the, pos the rate, if you look at the percentage, and you look at the percentage irrespective of the figures that we have tested, you will see that it is staying around the same, uh, the same rate of, be of, of below 5%, even if you test less or you test more. So we believe that that is uh, the, correct, uh, the correct rate, the correct positivity rate, and we hope that it stays there. Uh, Beatrice, you asked about um, uh, the, the issue of the, of the effectiveness of the, of the strikes. And what I said was that we are very grateful that uh, majority of the people who have been asked to go on strike have ignored it and have continued to work. And I believe it is in consideration of the difficult times that they understand that the country is going under. And I think it is also in consideration of the fact that we are doing so at a time when the virus is uh, still with us. So the timing of the requests, the, the request might be legitimate, but the timing of it is what is uh, perhaps making uh, people remain at work. And in most counties, you are in the media, you can carry out uh, these searches, and you can ask around. In most counties, you will find that uh, the healthcare workers are continuing to work, and we are grateful for that. Thank you very much, Asante Nisana.